Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about lower level doubles tactics today. So I would say that at lower levels, let's say from um, you know levels 3.0 to 3.5, I would say that 80% uh, of the points are being won by unforced errors and 20% of the points are being won by forced errors. So that stat right there tells you that at the end of the day, everybody puts their underwear on the same way. It does not have to be that good. Meaning putting balls in play, making your opponent respect you, playing by the book, playing high percentage, going for big targets, all those little things play a very large piece at lower levels. Yes, lower levels, we you know, see a wide range of, of ways to play. We obviously see a lot of banging. We, we don't see as much discipline. We are seeing people speed up much quicker. We're, we're seeing a lot of premature tackulation. If you can be disciplined at lower levels, start educating yourself with understanding how to play soft, it's only gonna help as your game grows and it's only gonna help as you bump up in levels. But when I, when I take a look at uh, lower level doubles tactics, uh, I think first, First and foremost, uh, think about where you're gonna hit your return. You know, think about uh, you should be returning to the person that is uh, inconsistent with their drop or maybe inconsistent with their drive. Or you should hit the return to the server that likes to serve and look to see how pretty their serve is and never repositions and gets back behind the baseline. And then on the, on the serving side, uh, you should get established where you're gonna drop or where you're gonna drive. Okay. Obviously, uh, if your opponents are hitting returns and staying back, or if your opponent hit a return and they're halfway in, anytime your opponents are not up and established, you should always look in, you should always be looking to drive. Okay. Anytime that our opponents are not up and established, we're always looking to drive there. If they're up and established, it's a little trial and error. And trial and error meaning you should always find the route that's gonna force you to deal with less traffic. Last thing we wanna do is take the path that's gonna uh, force us to deal with a heavy amount of traffic. Traffic meaning you should be dropping or driving to the person that's gonna enhance your fifth. I'm, I'm gonna say that once more. You should be dropping or driving to the person that's gonna enhance your fifth. Um, you should be dropping to the person who maybe is a counterattacker that doesn't have a lot of offense or maybe you should drop to the person that, uh, that likes to dink their fourth ball in the kitchen and then just invite you up, okay? You should be driving to the person who can't hurt you with their volley. But if you can drive to the person, that's gonna force them to volley short, and now you have a fifth shot drop halfway in and you haven't dealt with any sort of heavy traffic, that would be your best option. So we've talked about where you should hit the return. We've talked about where you should drive or drop. Now let's talk about what you should do once you get to the kitchen line. We've already mentioned that 80% uh, of the points are being won by unforced. 20% of the points are being won by forced. Now that's not, that's, that's not, always, that's not always the actual numbers, but, I'm, but I, I would assume that it, that it ranges anywhere from 90-10 to 70-30. Um, plain and simple, a, a good majority of points at lower levels are being won just by putting balls in play. Um, so once we get to the kitchen line, you need to find little gains or little, uh, little advantages or uh, uh, find your golden ticket. And, and your golden ticket could be found out in a wide variety of ways. You can find your golden ticket by uh, playing a more softer style. Uh, or you can find your golden ticket by playing high risk, high reward. Plain and simple, you've got to find your gain. If your gain is with the person that's in front of you because you can dink better than them, then you should keep your patterns there. If your gain is with the person that is cross court from you because you feel like your forehand dink is better than their forehand dink, then, then you should keep the pattern there. If you feel like your opponents are better dinkers than you, then that's when you would want to ramp it up a little bit, turn the knob, and maybe consider speeding up a little sooner or finding the correct person to speed up to that you can beat head to head. Thinking lower levels, probably gonna find yourself in a position where you're, where you're isolating one person, okay? Um, generally, lower levels, we can find one, one person that may be uh, uh, not at the skill set, and we can try to pick on that person and think about picking on that person um, uh, either through uh, soft dinking or playing by the book, um, playing a more high percentage style, or maybe they are better dinkers than you, but you can beat them head to head in a hand speed battle. Yeah. At the end of the day, if your patterns are working, uh, think about going back to Old Faithful and, and keep your patterns there. Um, but if you take a look at really good doubles teams, they, they find the gains, they um, ex exploit their opponent's weaknesses, 
and they take advantage of what they do well.